So here is a look at uh, the actual chemical structure of a phospholipid. What's shown here in the middle is the phospholipid that's found in bacteria and eukaryotes. What's shown on top are the phospholipids that are found in archaea. Now bacteria and archaea, both being prokaryotes, are very similar in size and very similar in terms of the structure or morphology. And you may wonder, you know, what's the big deal? Why do we classify them as being two separate domains of life? Well, here's one of the fundamental reasons in that their membrane lipids are completely different. So archaea do have use glycerol, shown here in red. That's glycerol, just like in bacteria and eukaryotes, except the form of glycerol that they use is a stereoisomer. It's a mirror image of the glycerol used by bacteria and eukaryotes, and it's very different for enzymes that use glycerol. There is also a phosphate attached to glycerol, shown here, just like in uh, bacteria and eukaryotes. Yeah. So there's some similarity here because they both have a glycerol and a phosphate, but remember the glycerol is the um, wrong stereoisomer or a different stereoisomer. But if you look here at the hydrophobic tail, what you see is something that's very different. Here in bacteria and eukaryotes, the hydrophobic tail is composed of I don't know why that line came in. Fatty acids. Okay. And fatty acids are built two carbons at a time. So the chain, this chain, is built two carbons at a time from molecules called acetate, which contains two carbons. And so our fatty acid tails are just long, straight hydrocarbon chains. But in archaea, their hydrocarbon chains are built from what are called isoprenoids or isoprene subunits, which is a five carbon chain or five carbon molecule. So there is an isoprene chain with one, two, three, four, five carbons. It's branched. And these are strung together. So the biochemistry of these fatty acid tails is completely different from the biochemistry of uh, the fatty acid uh, of the isoprene um, chains in archaea is completely different from the fatty acid chains um, in bacteria and eukaryotes. Not only that, but these uh, chains are hooked to or covalently linked to glycerol in what's called an ether linkage. So when you have a carbon connected to a, another carbon through an oxygen bridge, and the carbons are not fatty acids, or don't contain this carbonyl group, that's called an ether linkage. So why do archaea have these strange, to us anyway, uh, kinds of lipids in their membranes? Well, what we see is that in archaea, at least some of their phospholipids actually are form a, a complete covalent linkage from one side of the lipid bilayer all the way to the other. So instead of in our membranes and bacterial membranes having a lipid bilayer consisting of two leaflets, so a leaflet is one sheet of a lipid bilayer. So we have one leaflet and a second leaflet, and the two leaflets interact because their hydrophobic tails interact with each other. In archaea, it's basically essentially a monolayer with hydrophilic groups on both sides. And you can imagine that this type of structure in archaea is going to be much stronger and more resistant to environmental stress than the uh, bilayer leaflet structure. And archaea tend to inhabit 
extreme environments. And therefore, this type of a lipid in their membranes may, well, is undoubtedly of adaptive significance. Now, when we look at variations in lipid composition, what we find is that eukaryotic cells have membrane lipids that are unique to just eukaryotes and not found in bacteria or archaea. And these are cholesterol, or more generally, sterols. Not all eukaryotes have exactly cholesterol. They use other variants, but they all fall into the family of sterols, which all contain four rings. In addition, eukaryotic cells contain a non-phospholipid lipid in their membranes called a sphingolipid, shown here. As you can see, it has no glycerol backbone. It does have a single fatty acid chain. What's shown in brown is the molecule called sphingosine. Now together, cholesterol and sphingolipids can constitute up to 50% of the lipids on the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane of eukaryotic cells. So what's strange is that cholesterol can be found in both sides of the uh, plasma membrane, in both leaflets. Sphingolipids are found only in the outer leaflet. and basically only in the plasma membrane. And vesicles called endosomes that are derived from the plasma membrane or will fuse with the plasma membrane. So these molecules are not found in the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, or in mitochondria. Uh, and neither is cholesterol. Cholesterol is usually found mostly in the plasma membrane as well. Oh, and the functions of both cholesterol and sphingolipids is that, are that um, they both um, uh, strengthen membranes. Cells do not live, or eukaryotic cells cannot live without cholesterol or uh, sphingolipids. Uh, mutants that can't make these uh, die, uh, and their membranes uh, become extremely leaky. And so their uh, role appears to be in uh, making membranes stronger, uh, less permeable, okay. and cells can adjust the amount of cholesterol in their membrane to adjust the permeability of their membranes. Okay. One other thing I want to mention is that cholesterol, it, the biosynthetic pathway is really complicated, but synthesis of cholesterol requires atmospheric or molecular oxygen. In fact, it requires 11 molecules of oxygen to synthesize one molecule of cholesterol. Which means that eukaryotes could not have arisen until there was sufficient oxygen, free oxygen, available for cholesterol synthesis. Now, bacteria also have lipids that are special to them. And these are called hopanes. Hopanes are, you can think of them as the bacterial equivalent of sterols. Now, unlike sterols, they have, which have four rings, hopanes have five rings, and no oxygen is required for the synthesis of hopanes. Hopanes are thought to serve a similar function in strengthening the membrane um, and controlling membrane permeability as sterols in eukaryotic cells. 
one of the interesting things about hull panes is that they're abundant enough um, in geology in petrochemical deposits that uh, some people think that they are the most abundant lipids or in fact the, the most abundant uh, biological molecules on earth because of their presence in petroleum deposits.